Thanks for joining us. I'm Randall Bennett. Today, a report out of USA Today claims that Apple and Verizon are in high-level talks, that's their words, not mine, about bringing the iPhone to Verizon. They say that Steve Jobs, before taking his medical leave of absence, was intimately involved in, in the discussions. And so when Steve come back, you know, the speculation is that maybe the iPhone could be coming to Verizon. What does that mean for everyone involved? Let's talk to two experts. We have Mike Rose from the unofficial Apple weblog. Mike, thanks for being with us. Pleasure to be here with you, Randall. And also, James Papadopoulos from TechSpank joins us. James, thanks for being with us. No problem. So let's talk about this from you know, a lot of different perspectives. First, Apple. What does it mean for Apple? And Mike, why do you think that it's taken so long for them to even consider the idea of going outside the AT&T stable? Well, I think a, a lot of the decisions about what carrier was going to feature the iPhone, uh, at least domestically in the U.S., were made pretty early on in the development process of the phone. I mean, once you decide that it's going to be a GSM handset, which uh, simplifies the process of rolling it out worldwide, uh, not for nothing, uh, you've, you've basically locked yourself into one of two domestic carriers in the U.S., and that's AT&T or T-Mobile. didn't really make sense to go with T-Mobile. AT&T was the much wider um, deployed choice, having merged with Singular. Um, so, you know, once you're down that road of the exclusivity with AT&T, Apple wasn't in the market for another carrier, certainly not for a CDMA carrier like Verizon. Now things have changed a little bit. Verizon is going to have their next generation LTE network uh, in the initial deployment phases by next year, actually starting at the end of this year, uh, according to some reports. And that is going to be a GSM-based technology. LTE um, moves from CDMA to GSM. Yeah. It's a lot of alphabet soup, but all that <laughs> to say, um, Apple has the opportunity with Verizon to get on the next generation network sooner than it would with AT&T, which is not going to be deploying LTE until the 2011 time frame. So with that, it's they kind of hope that you know, there would be better applications on the internet? Is that kind of the idea? Well, you can do a lot more in terms of mobile, mobile internet, mobile video, mobile media on an LTE network. That, that'll get you up to 50 or 60 megabit, which is faster than most terrestrial connections. Yeah. And, uh, and also really you know, would allow a device like the iPhone to shine. Now, a lot of people are looking at this report and saying, well, this is just Apple um, having a conversation with, uh, with the girl down the street to make AT&T jealous and try to get uh, a better deal on, the, on AT&T's re-up for exclusivity on the device. I, I'm leaning more towards this as a real and substantive conversation that Apple's having uh, with Verizon. It's interesting stuff. James, let's look at this from a consumer's perspective. You know, do you think that for the, all the people who haven't yet purchased the iPhone, they're waiting for Verizon to get the opportunity? Or what's your take on this? I mean, you know, you can never tell exactly what people are going to do once the product's released. I mean, when the iPhone came out originally for AT&T, Nobody really knew who was going to buy it until the lines started forming, and then, of course, it's now the iPod of the phones. Spoiler well, alert, nerds. <laughs> <laughs> I was online, but I went to a different mall, and there was, like, nobody. <laughs> but um, a lot of people I know do want the iPhone, but they are locked into a Verizon contract. But the whole thing about switching over to GSM, like, will it happen, won't it happen, it's not going to be an overnight thing. I'm not too sure if Apple's going to redesign the entire structure of the phone just so that it could be released on a carrier in the United States, because nobody else in the world uses CDMA anymore. It's all GSM. Well, there's like places in Korea and a place in China. But for the most part, you're right. It's standard, standardized around GSM, and people are kind of looking towards LTE in favor of EVDO and all these different things. All those alphabet soup again. What do you think for consumers themselves, though? Do you think that, you know, that you know, having 80 million more people be able to use the iPhone will bump sales up that much? Or do you think that it's kind of just going to be like, you know, I, if I wanted the iPhone, I would have got it earlier? Well, as far as the consumer goes, who cares about sales? I mean, it's more about competition. If you have two carriers with the iPhone, I'm pretty sure after a year and a half, I'm not going to be paying $99 a month for my <laughs> TV service anymore. It's going to start point. getting whittled down very quickly. And so will AT&T allow that to happen? More importantly, I think um, Apple takes a cut of the monthly subscriber bill. So if, if there's competition amongst carriers, the total bill goes down, will it make sense for them to actually get less of a percentage? You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's not exactly worthwhile to have that much competition if it's going to lower the prices. I mean, they want to sell more handsets, sure, but at the end of the day, what are they making more money off of? A handset sell or a monthly bill that, you know, yeah. who knows mm -hmm. how much they get? It almost sounds like to me that the real loser in this situation in Verizon ads is is AT&T and Verizon to some extent as well. You know, there's been rumored forever that Apple originally went to Verizon to kind of 
strike this deal. And ever since then, you know, AT&T, of course, gets the first mover advantage with the iPhone. But um, you know, either way, this competition is seems to be good for consumers and bad for carriers like AT&T. Let's. Well, do, oops, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to make the, the one more point that the 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 role of AT and the the role of the iPhone for AT&T has been not only a bump in market share and a bump in new accounts, but also a bump in revenue because the individual accounts, as James pointed out, are so profitable yeah. on the iPhone. You're paying for that big data plan. You're paying for the premium capabilities of the phone, of the of the account. And you know you're still going to need that with Verizon. You still need that unlimited data plan. Um, the only question is whether or not Pete, there is a substantial population domestically that's been avoiding the iPhone just because of AT and T, because either they don't have AT and T coverage where they live, or they can't stand that carrier. Yeah. Verizon has better satisfaction rates with American customers than AT and T does. I definitely think there is a contingent of people. Whether I don't know how big, of course, but people like me who can't stand AT and T personally. So there's that. There you go. Let's switch gears for a second and talk Blu-ray. Now, last week Panasonic came out with a portable Blu-ray player that fits in your car. Now, this is mm -hmm. one of those in-dash models where the screen flips up, and you know it's obviously for the pimp my ride set and not for uh, your regular, oh, your yeah. regular soccer mom. Um, but with this. You know, it kind of brings home the point that Blu-ray is still trying to go mainstream. You know, it's been a couple years since the format wars have been settled, and now people are assuming that Blu-ray, if there's going to be a next generation format, the Blu-ray will take the crown. Consumers, though, just aren't biting. James, why do you think people have been holding off on this Blu-ray purchase, and you know, what's it going to take for them to get over the hump, or will they? It's expensive. Hello. Have you gone to the store lately? <laughs> um, the thing is about Blu-ray is most people already have DVD players. I mean, they made that leap and they started building their collection and whatnot. And so they'll go to their friend's house who might have a PS3 or something, and they'll, they'll see it on the TV, like the one behind me, which is um, 42 inches or 47, depending if you're measuring online yeah. or not. <laughs> um, but the difference isn't that big. I mean, sure, you could go to Best Buy or something when they have one of those Sony, Disney, Pirates of the Caribbean setups with like the Bose surround sound thing yeah. or whatever. And that's not most people's living room. So most people aren't going to see a difference unless they have a projection TV or a huge ass plasma or LCD. To have it in a car is even more ridiculous because on a seven inch screen, you just aren't going to see a difference. It's definitely going to be like a, a wow factor, like I could put yeah. a Blu-ray disc, but unless you tell people before you put the disc in, they're not going to be able to know. They're, they won't. I mean, I think, I What's I was that? just gonna, I was gonna, gonna agree with you completely that the your, the experience, the media experience in the car is not going to be any more compelling really with Blu-ray than it would be with DVD. But the important thing here is that if you're buying your media library in Blu-ray format, you don't want to have to rebuy stuff for the kids in DVD just so you can play it in the car. Um, you know, it's an open question as to whether or not Blu-ray media, the Blu-ray movies are really going to get some traction. But if they do over time you will see the in-car and the portable players move away from DVD and toward Blu-ray just because that's what people's libraries are going to be in. My take is right. I think you know the next step really isn't either Blu-ray or any other physical format. I think we're just going to see things like LTE roll out. We're going to see better video compression and you know someday you'll be able to access your media library from your car instead of having to bring it with you on a disc. Guys, we're out of time, so we'll have to leave it there. Uh, thanks to my uh, guest, Mike Rose from twa.com. Mike, thanks for being with us. Also, pleasure. James Papadopoulos from TextBank. It's textbank.com. You're on iTunes everywhere else like that, too, so you can catch them there. I'm Randall Bennett. We'll see you next time on the show. Thanks for watching. And uh, we're on iTunes. We're on YouTube. We're in a lot of different places, so hopefully you'll be able to watch us somewhere. See ya.